Who owns the cappuccino? Oh, you own the... Yeah. And I'm distracted again, Advan, this sweet looking wheels. Hey, good day everyone, this is Daniel Legrady. Welcome to another Wasabi Cars video. Super, super special video because I'm in Canberra. I'm in Canberra, yeah? Awesome. <laughs> Connor, Paul, Steve, and Daniel. <laughs> there we go, team, team Red Stage. There's, there's stickers. What does that say? Red, red car. That's not a team, maybe. Can Canberra? Holy dilly! It says Canberra. Okay, some oh, there we go, and a bit of a bit of hentai <laughs> over there. So um, yeah, let's check out the 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 prelude over here. And I did get a little bit of information about this car. Apparently, the rear wing custom made, and uh, and you've got some other bits for it, haven't you? Yeah. So basically, it's an Australian SI model yep. prelude. Yep. Which is bottom of the line. You'll see it's got four stud wheels. It's got oh. small brakes. It's non VTEC. Yeah. I bought it because the air conditioning works. How good's that? Though? And I, my little brother originally owned it, and yeah. he had a kangaroo. It was damaged, and I just bought it as a daily. Yeah. I originally saw this, which oh, is yeah? the Jack's Accord from like the nineties, oh, and I yeah, really yeah, like. Yeah, it looks so good. I really like the livery and the paint job, and I wanted a car that looks like this. So yeah. I figured instead of painting it factory blue again, I would try yeah. and do a Jack's Accord inspired. Nice. Paint job. Is it. is there any evidence of that original color Absolutely. somewhere? Yes. Because just car. just to get a, 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 a oh. oh. The engine bay, here we go. So the... And the door jam. <laughs> and the door jam, like I said, it's just closed door, sanded it, painted it, it's not a show car. Yeah. Okay. So it was this blue colour. Ah, okay. You can see here, this is all still bent from where it hit the kangaroo. Oh. Our steering reservoir is made out of fiberglass because I didn't have another one at the time. Fiberglass, jeez. So it's, it's still good. I do actually have another one now and I bought it about two years ago to change and I've never changed it because oh, okay. it, it doesn't leak, so... Well, why... why it's still in yep. there, still good. Yeah, this is an F22Z6, which is only in Australia for this car. Oh, okay. But it's not actually a good engine, so... Not a good engine. No one's missing out. And uh, could you tell us about the suspension components so the here? the suspension is just max speeding rods, coilovers. Yeah. They sent them to me as a, to do a video because they like the look of the car. Oh, nice. And other than that, the car's mechanically, it's all standard. I just sort of wanted it to look cool as a daily driver. Yeah. One of the coolest things about the original car is the ride height on them is super low. Yeah. And if you look at the old photos of it, they're like tucking wheels a lot, long way into the guards. Yeah. So I would like to, I've rolled these as far as I can, but yeah. in the future I'd like to knock the guards out and push the seams back and get it lower. Holy dooly. Lower again. But, Pretty serious. Yeah, beyond that, no, it's just an everyday car. I don't nice. really have any big mods playing. Actually, in the indicators are from a Harley Davidson. Yeah. <laughs> so it had, they normally have big plastic ones, and I put these in, there wasn't room, so these are little Harley indicators that fit in the space nicely. It's good. Yeah. There you go. Sure. <laughs> hey! Car number two, people. This was a real surprise. When I saw it, I thought, there we go. And uh, American, an American car. And do you know when this landed in Australia? Okay, so it landed here in 2012. And what was the state of it when you got, got your hands on it? Uh, so it was in a pretty sorry state when we got our hands on it. It uh, had a lot of rust in it. It been uh, badly resprayed. It wasn't running. Yeah. Um, Sweet we combo. bought it sight unseen, basically. Mm. Um, drove up to Brisbane to pick it up and then brought it back here. Yeah. And uh, then we began the restoration work on it. Nice work. Oh, and then, so what work have you undertaken? Of course, rust repairs, yep. it's had a respray, but I'm sure it's more detailed than that. Yeah, so uh, we had to strip it entirely, strip, brought it all the way back to bare metal. Yep. Um, we had to rebuild the motor, uh, and uh, my wife retrimmed the seats, and uh, we had to redo the whole interior. So we got a kit out of uh, America to help us do that. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, it did all the suspension, every every piece of running gear's been done. Out. And uh, the interior, you said your wife retrimmed the seat, so she's a bit a bit of a a just bit likes, of a legend on the. She just likes giving things a go. A yeah. Bit of a go. And... Very very nice. And how is it using the the right hand on the gear? <laughs> it's very different. It's very different. But uh, 
you get used to it very fast. So nice. that's, it, it's interesting driving in the wrong side of the car, okay. but on the correct side of the road. Nice. Do you, have you ever parked so close to the curb that you can't get out? All the time. All the time. There you go. And can we see the engine? Yeah, Is that absolutely. Cool? Let's check it out, people. Oh, okay. Different than I... Uh, I'll tell you what. I mean, nothing against this car, but in Japan, triple carburetors. Oh, yes, yes. It's got to be the triple carburetors. So this is the factory fuel injection. So this is the, injection. the factory fuel injection, uh, which is original. So we decided to keep it all original. Yeah. Um, and uh, as you can see, it's got vacuum pipes and all sorts of stuff. It's very busy. Yeah. It's a very early version of fuel injection. And of course, the light. Nice. There we go. Look at that. So when you have an idea when you're driving, click. <laughs> Bing. Oh, are these wheels? Are these genuine? Um, <laughs> genuine Koenig rewinds. Koenig <laughs> rewinds. I thought so. They're an American wheel, which is obviously uh, inspired by a proper Latata B wheel. Nice. And uh, these all those lost 10 mil sockets are they? Yeah, that's correct. Oh, 12. <laughs> <laughs> 12 mil. I really what? Uh, Disc brakes, were, they, were these yeah. the original disc brakes? So these are Hilux vented Hilux. Uh, brakes that we've put on here. Yeah. And uh, it's got uh, the rear brakes from an S14 on them. S14 Sylvian, nice. Excellent, thank you so much, man. That is a beauty. No Cheers. <laughs> Sensational. So the next car is, of course, the Cappuccino, which is a fantastic car. And I still see so many of these in Japan cars of that era like japan they chuck them out you know they get them crushed but this is a car that has stayed popular is what i'm saying yeah and definitely. uh incredible and uh when you bought this car was it basically looking exactly like that or you've done some things to it no it was stock as a rock when i bought it um had the standard wheel standard front bumper so what i've done is i swapped out the front bumper don't yep. ask me what type of bumper it is what I type of no uh, idea, no <laughs> idea. It's got bigger wheels on it, it's got the big 15, yeah. Heroes, Racing, something or others. Yeah. I know heaps about my car. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, it's got the FDRX7 wing that's something. Of course. It's done a good job at it too. Sensational. Oh yeah, yeah. Well actually, let's, let's just check out that rear wing, RX7. And it doesn't appear so wide either, that's incredible. No. Very, very cool. I think we have to see the interior and the engine. Can I yep. crack that? In in Japan, I'm so wary of touching people's cars, but we have permission, people. This is sensational. That is a bit of water. Not not too much, just the right amount. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Three, sweet. A couple of gauges there. Oh, look at that. That's incredible. Very, very nice. Oh, and then what's the figure in the... Oh, is it a cat? Yeah, some sort of lucky cat. I bought eh. that one in Tokyo. Nice. And uh, these uh, JDM cobwebs out the back here? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Especially imported. <laughs> nice. Country car, this one. <laughs> we, we do export the Redback Spider to Japan. Here we go, cappuccino. Three cylinder. Twin overhead cam. Uh, tw I'm assuming 12 hour. Okay, yeah, nice. 12 hour. 660 cc's as it should be. Yep. Um, high mount with a Garrett T. 15 on it or something like that. Yep. Tiniest Garrett you can buy after market. Um, there's the BC coilovers. This is a nice Commodore mark right here. Commodore. Someone managed to hit it in a car park. Ah, oh, damn it. I don't know how because it always has this much gap between the cars. Oh, it's, it's a tiny car, yeah. Yeah. Like they would have gone out of their way literally to, I think so. to make their. They, they put in some effort that, to yeah. crash into my car. Oh, and the, the last little fun fact. Ooh. The mirrors are green because I hit a kangaroo. Okay, that's two out of the three cars that have hit kangaroos, people. <laughs> and I tell you what, I have seen some wombats on the roads recently. Yeah, Let me just tell you. Those. Yeah. Thanks so much. Okay, tag team. So this is a fourth generation Honda Prelude. And the only thing making it interesting is it's Japanese import, not an Australian one. Yep. The most obvious thing, Japanese import, is it's got a rear windscreen wiper. Rear, okay. And you'll see that one there doesn't have one, which is an Australian delivered of the same shape. And that applies to 
all the generations are prelude. If they have a rewiper, it's a Japanese one. If wow. it doesn't, it's an Australian or an American one, I guess. Understood. And I have the exact rust on my wipers <laughs> on my <laughs> carol. Yeah, they're going to have to get cleaned up. On this. Dude, this is incredible. Look at this the is, beautiful Sabi. This is super common on these. So for whatever reason, I don't yeah. know if Honda got the sunroofs made somewhere differently than the rest of the car. The sunroofs yeah. rust really badly and the rest of the car doesn't. Oh. So that's kind of why I didn't feel bad drilling holes in the roof of that one for the police lights because it's full of rust in the roof anyway. Oh, okay. But the fifth generation one, the one yep. that's done up in the Jack's livery, they have a glass sunroof and the shape is the same. So you, people just swap the glass Pop panel in instead of fixing this one. Nice. So this is halfway through getting nuts. No, like the only thing that makes it really interesting is it's a top of the line Japanese version. Yeah. So it's got the VTEC H22A in it, which is the nice engine that would be in the Jack's livery one if it was not the Pov Pack one. Okay. But beyond that, this is all standard. I'm just fixing it up. I okay. see, I remember you put it out on Steve's cappuccino, the import plate was green. Yeah. This one is yellow, and that means that this one was bought in someone as their personal car. Personally imported Whereas vehicle. the yeah. cappuccino is bought in as like a, a scheme, like they're allowed to like a shop import at 100 of them. Oh, okay. Whereas this one, someone's owned it in Japan, and then it was their car, and they brought it with them. I think you have to own it for two years yeah. to be allowed to bring it in as a personal import. Oh, well, let's check out the police one. Now, uh, I totally got uh, questions, messaged about this car years ago. Yeah, um, so what, what was it you were asking? You're asking me if I'd seen. Well, I was just what? trying. So I was trying to track down. There's a Japanese like a magazine videotape that gets put out. It was on VHS yeah. called Patrol Car Mania. Oh, okay. And I in the shorts oh, for it that I found on YouTube. Yeah. There was like a half second clip of <laughs> this Prelude police car, and I was trying to find. Well, I think it was Volume Nine that had it. And I was trying forever to track down this VHS tape. So I was ah. messaging anyone I could think of. Yeah. Where can I try to look for it? I was looking places like Book Off and Yahoo Auctions, yeah, and yeah. trying to find a copy. And I still haven't found that right. that issue. But this was another car I bought that was pretty poor condition. It used to have a skyline front bumper on it. Wow. And um, I was just trying. To, it was silver originally, and I was yeah. trying to think of a cool way to paint it. Yeah. And then I saw a picture of the original patrol car, and I thought, yes, I'm going to make it look like a Japanese. Police nice. car. So these are like the proper lights. Yeah, yeah, I spent yeah for time sure. Finding these, I've I can't got... read kanji, but uh, I can read a, a few of them. Bright style, police, bright <laughs> something. Yeah, yeah. So I've got the, it's got a the siren controller in it. Is the correct one, which is on the dash here. supposed to sound like a mechanical siren that's yeah. why it winds up and down but it's electric three is that 325,000 k's on the clock yep so this engine is a, is a low spec one they come in accords as well and they're known for just lasting forever it's a single cam that's incredible and this car doesn't have an easy life either you see it's got a hydraulic can brake yeah it's got twin rear calibers on the back so it's done plenty of drifting it's not actually bolted down at the moment oh, okay it's, yeah it's wow plenty of Whoa. This car. it doesn't have an easy life but yeah yeah just yeah last. these engines they're really good and that's, that's that car down, and we're going to head into the garage now, people, and there's some real surprises in here, I've got to say. So I saw a picture of this Honda City, oh, busted again. I saw a picture of this Honda City, it looked absolutely mint in the Instagram feed, and uh, doesn't look mint up close and personal, but uh, from what I know about the car, he bought it, how many years ago did you grab this one? Uh, maybe two years ago. Two years ago for a few hundred dollars. Yeah, two hundred and fifty dollars. And it was across the road at a at a junkyard yeah, essentially. Yeah. And it was full of rust all through here. It was painted orange. Not that that was the original colour because it was of course red. You can see that right there. Uh, and uh, I don't think he'll mind me saying, but it, it certainly is a bit rough. However, bags of style, people. Bags of style. And the sweet combo of that. It's almost an iridescent yellow, isn't it? So it's actually. I went to the paint shop and said, give me the yellowest yellow you can get. Yeah. It's the yellow tint that you use <laughs> to make other yellows. So it's just as yellow as you can get as a color. You know what? I want to interrupt in the middle of this Honda City because I'm easily distracted. And there's tons of interesting bikes here. Now, this one here, do your knees drag on the ground no. or they go over the no, handlebars? or? You just sit on it in a very awkward squatting position and run okay. around falling off it constantly. And then this absolute weapon, what in, that's... So this is a Honda ATC, yeah. which is like a trike. Mm. This is the Honda ATC engine. Yeah. And the engine that's in there currently is a Suzuki PE250, like two-stroke enduro yeah. motor, which is a really dangerous combination in this trike because it does okay. not want to go in a straight line. And as soon as it comes on the power band, it wants to do wheelies and take right. off wherever it wants to go. And it's yeah, it's kind of scary. But and I'm cool. loving how this probably piping hot exhaust pipe <laughs> yeah. would, would be getting so hot and maybe you could fry some skin off yeah, your I've leg. Yeah, I've melted my incredible. shoe into the front of it before. Wow. But other than that, it's 
it's pretty safe enough, I guess. The brakes don't work either, so you got to like make sure you've got plenty <laughs> of room for it to like roll to a stop. Okay. Key point, don't drive that. Nifty 50s. Yeah, and the fairings vary slightly from Japan to Australia. One thing that is kind of cool is that I'll roll it forwards, is I got it from the original owner, and yeah. that's its original Australian number plate on the back, so it looks, the font's a bit different to normal, and it's actually got wow. the sticker of the dealership that it came from. Okay. Now, I, I probably won't spend so much time on these two bikes, but... Uh... This unit right here, which I totally got the rundown and I've completely <laughs> forgotten everything. It's an NSR50. NSR, and then this gargantuan 80cc. 80cc. It's a Honda Lead. This is an Australian delivered one. Yep. And in, in Japan they're called Leads as well, but I think Americans watching would know them as Aeros, which is a lot more common. Okay. But yeah, it's an Australian delivered one. 80cc is technically two seater, which is nice. <laughs> but yeah, it doesn't go very fast with two people on it. That's yeah. Why it's got these little, little extra pegs here for the back passenger. Yeah. Ah, understood. But yeah, that does about, I think this tops out at about 70 kilometers an hour. Wow. This one does about 100. Yeah. That one does about 30. Oh, okay, well now we're back to this one and uh, yeah, I mean, you said this is the first one you this ever is painted, much right? the first car I painted. And I'm distracted again, Advan, they're sweet looking wheels. Honda cam covers. See the rust I didn't fix. The rust he didn't fix. Plenty of, oh, so plenty, red. Plenty of holes getting on in here. And then this one you can see is a personal import again because it's got a yellow yep. a yellow plate. Yep. That's how the system goes. Understood. Lots of red in there, yeah. And pin in Farina, yeah, incredible. Oh, I'm, I'm going to guess lots of 80s, 90s CDs in there. Oh, Cat Empire as well, okay. The CDs come from the same tip shop that the car came from every time I go. If nice. I see any that I like, pick them up for a dollar or whatever they are there. Nice. And it's got the David Jones interior. Not really. <laughs> <laughs> Lathe. Holy, what's, what's going on here? Is uh, that legal? So the wheel spacers are actually, I was using them over here. Yeah. This is a setup to cut three-piece wheels back to, like, cut them apart to rebarrel them and stuff. Nice. So that was what the wheel spacers were doing. And and the keyboard, what's this that's connected just, to, mate? It's just plugged into this, watching videos what, or something. And what's, what's this? So that's going... I bought that because the Japanese police car is supposed to have a thing in the back telling yeah. you to pull over, which is what that's doing. Yeah. But that's 240 volt. I just bought it as a sign board. So yeah. a thing that's an add for the police car, an add-on for the police car. Yeah. I'll convert it to 12 volts. It'll go in the back to flip up and down so I can push a button and have the display in the back. So I'm slowly Incredible. collecting all the parts for the police car. Incredible. This guy's a maniac, people. Oh, I know that. That is yeah. totally from a Honda S600. Yeah. And I did a video recently of a... Carrozzeria Watanabe modified S600 or S800, and I needed. You needed a picture of this. And you I only did. Had the blown up photo of it. And then here it is, the chain driven. It's laid out as incredible. Really that is, that is absolutely incredible. You say so. Normally, this would be this would be facing that way, and that would be facing that way. Yeah. And then this piece with the chain inside. Yeah. Would be on the side here, and then your wheel. Driving the rear wheels. On the end, and then the suspension goes up and down. Up and down. With that. Incredible. It's just incredible, people. And what? Whoa, what's over here? That's my first car from when I was like 16. That's the reason I have all these preludes. Oh, okay, so you were 16 and you got the and prelude I, I, bug? Yeah, I wanted one of these. I wanted them because they were four wheel steer, which I really liked. So yeah. the back wheel steer. And I wanted something pop up headlights. That was my. Nice. <laughs> That's why I really liked it. So this one, typical 16-year-old P plater. I was like, I'll oh, put a big turbo on it. It'll be super fast. And it pretty much hasn't moved since then. Hasn't so, moved. <laughs> so, Damn. Yeah, it ended up getting hail damaged a while ago, so I'm slowly pulling all the hail out of it and collecting yeah. bits and pieces to get it fixed up and going again. Wow, it's incredible. And factory alloys, I'm assuming. Yeah. The more, the more I think about the dumb P plater stuff I did with it and how yeah. nice it actually was, the more mm. I'm not happy with myself <laughs> but it's all right everyone ah. makes mistakes like that the main thing is i'm very happy that i still have it yeah. to be able to fix it whereas most yeah, people man. lose their first car or whatever and you yeah. can't go back and fix it <laughs> exactly my first car my first and only car i ever bought in australia was a vk calais yep. i sold it for one and a half grand in in 2001 yep. and uh it was sort of rough paint and all that but uh the dude got it for a bargain and it was a great car. I had the six-cylinder engine, but still, you know, that yep. was my first and only car. Wow. And um, it serves as storage yeah, shelf for so, so many things. It's actually pretty hail damaged. It, uh, got, it was outside, it really hailed, which is why I'm not worried about putting stuff on it. Yeah. And I've been going through with one of these hot glue things where you glue the tab on and you pull it to pull the dent out. So I've been, you can't yeah. really see the dents in it, but I'm slowly learning how to do that and fix the dents in it. Yep. That's why there's spare. So I've bought boot lids and bonnets <laughs> and guards and any bits that I can replace, I replace. Then bits yeah. like the roof, I'm just working out how to fix it. That's Good the stuff, man. Gearbox on the ground. Oh, okay. 
Nice. And you said before this was four-wheel steer, four yeah? four-wheel steer, yeah. Actually, you can see the four-wheel steer. So that's another Prelude. This is called an Iron X. Yeah. So it doesn't, it's a third generation Prelude, but it doesn't have pop-up headlights. It was a very limited, oh my God. like, top-of-the-line run. Incredible. One. And I don't know, you've got to watch the four. That's watch. incredible, people. Uh, I'm just, I'm just going to yap to myself for just a sec. For just a sec. Now, people, this is the non-pop-up headlight version. And I've seen about two of these in Japan. One of them at a car show at a Honda meet where there were incredibly few cars. The next time I saw one was at a dealer and he thought I was like some criminal and he chased me off his property. So I'm sort of scarred by this car. But yeah, non-pop-up headlight. I have one of these model generation preludes as a drift car. Yeah. And everyone thinks it's rear wheel drive converted because they see the four wheel steer rack underneath and think it's a diff. Yeah. Because it looks like a differential, oh, but does. you see it actually attaches. It's absolutely steering. Yeah, that's the rack in the back that does the rear steering on them. That one there, incredible. I feel like a, an archaeologist. <laughs> and this engine is a what this engine? This is a H22A. Yep. So my drift car, which is this model Prelude, comes with a 2-litre engine. Yep. But I've converted it to use the newer Honda, these 2.2-litre okay. ones out of the newer shape Preludes. Okay. So, so your drift car is in Japan? At I've got one at Ebisu, yep. which is the police car shape. Yeah. But my one in Australia is this shape. Okay. It's not parked here at the moment. It's at and home. How is it storing a, a car overseas? Like, what's the, what's the uh, deal? What's the setup there? The, the people we talked to, Andy and Emily at Power Vehicles, are Scottish people. So they, Power Vehicles. Yeah. So they've got a Holden Ute over there. Yeah, they've got the I'm black sure Ute have. sitting at the thing. Yeah, so we do it all through them, so it's pretty easy. Just, okay everything's in English and yeah, yeah it's 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 geared towards holiday foreign people so okay. it's very easy well shout out to power vehicles and let me drop by and shoot a video of that Holden you please because <laughs> I love Holden's in Japan incredible thank you so much now let's get to the s600 when did you get your hands on this man about a year ago I think so as usual I don't buy, I don't go looking for cars because I don't really have room to store these cars but people yeah. keep coming to me and go hi I've got a blah 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 do you want it yeah. and someone came to me and said I have an S600 it's, it was about a 10 minute drive from here just down the street in the guy's yeah. house yeah. and he was yeah didn't want it didn't want it wanted to get rid of it and yeah. so I ended up buying it off him I never thought I'd own an S600 and never looked for one but it sort of found me and now I'm yeah, going through the process of restoring it very slowly uh, okay how complete is it I think it's fairly complete so over Sorry, the other side second. of the workshop, there's a. I've got all the parts for it. Yeah. Or well, apparently all the parts for it. Oh. So you can see, this is what I've been working on lately. Is the chain case. This is all. You can see it's all cleaned up and stuff now. Yeah. On the ground here is the. This is the chassis for it. This is all spare rear ends and gearboxes and suspension. Like yeah. I've got a spare. That's a disassembled engine. And then I've also got a fully assembled engine sitting next to the car. Yeah. Over there. Yeah. And I've also got about ten plastic tubs of trim and boxes and bolts and brackets and yeah. the cars it's supposed to be pretty much complete there's a few little bits i've noted like a boot hinge and like i'm sure i'll find stuff that's missing but it's yeah it's complete about as complete as you'll get one incredible like this. now uh this is a we're going a, a little bit tangential here but when i post pictures of these cars people are like oh is that the original stud pattern Yes, it's, tell me about the stud pattern. So the stud pattern car. is five by one thirty, yeah. which is the same as old NSUs and Porsches and stuff. So, yeah, they're a big spaced out five stud as the factory pattern. So they're nice. the stock wheels sitting on the ground underneath there, the yes. little steelies. Nice. Hey, back back to that in a sec. <laughs> sorry, yep. This is oh, sorry. If you were oh no, I I I, <laughs> I bloopered myself out of that one. <laughs> um, I actually asked you oh, ages ago. Have you seen one of these? Yeah. And okay. you hadn't. You'd never had a photo of this okay. in Japan, so yep. I never seen one in Japan either. This is a CC, uh, CB5 Vigor. Yes. This is, apparently it's the only one in Australia. Yep. And it's an inline five cylinder. The only one in Australia? Oh, it's the Dude, it's low as heck, it's by the bags. way. Airbags, so okay. Airbags. Yeah, it's a inline five, which is out of the ordinary for Honda stuff. And uh, we've got doilies, people. We love to see it. They're and crown doilies. Oh, crown doilies. Find Vigor ones. Well, they fit like the proverbial in the. Mm. Um, yeah, very, yeah, very cool. Um, good condition, cloth. Yeah. That's so good. Is that real? It's, it's zebra wood. So they had different timbers as options, and then this is the Italian wool interior, which is an option that came on the type. Uh, the Type S Limited, which is the wing, the wheels, and the wool interior, is the Type S Limited trim. Yeah. Nice. Automatic, 153,000 Ks on the clock. It's 230,000 on it. It's not the original. Oh. Dash, 200. Dash died in it. So that's one I bought from the auctions. 230,000. Ish. Yeah. Ish. 
Oh, and you mentioned this earlier. Yeah, that's, that's that ring that I found. So that's the optional one for that curly, but I've got to paint it to match now. So. Okay. Uh, how, uh, just, I don't know these things. So was it hard to source? It how was, much was it? It took me about two years to find it. And I think I paid $500 for it. Yeah. They're, they used to be easy because everyone hated how they looked. Yeah. So they all went in the bin. And now the fine one's actually hard and they've sort of back in fashion and now they're worth money, which is the normal for cycle sure. of things from that For age. sure. Because um, they're definitely an acquired taste. Yeah, it's, I mean, this is going to seem not, oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah, no one noticed that. Um, yeah, incredible. There you go. Wow, thank you so much. Excellent, what a legend this fella is and the, the level of Honda fanaticism is incredible. <laughs> And you've got these things on the wall too. And we're not even close to being done with the Aussie adventures. We've got Crown Shenanigans, Benny's Custom Works, Barrel Brothers, Car Shows and Wrecking Yards. So do get yourself subscribed and ring that notification bell and see you next Saturday with another one. Take it easy and goodbye.